Welcome back. This is the third video in the pizza oven thermometer series. In the first video, we made a simple temperature sensor using a thermocouple and a microcontroller, which we then connected into Home Assistant using ESP Home. And then in the second video, we improved the design. We added an LCD display with a gauge and a needle, along with a nice box to hold the electronics. And now in this video, we will go through the process of designing a custom PCB and mounting this into the box. Uh, this is my, you know, it's the very first time that I've manufactured a printed circuit board, so it wasn't quite plain sailing. Um, I did make a few mistakes, which we will go through, but uh, on the whole, the process was a lot of fun and um, easier than you might think. I'm using an EDA software package called KiCad, which is free to use for personal projects. You'll need to Google for some symbols. So we're going to need a symbol for the Espressi VSP32 S3 dev kit and for the Max31855 uh, thermocouple amplifier. Uh, you need to import them into KiCad uh, and then we're going to wire them together in the schematic view. The MAX31855 chip is a straight replacement for the MAX6675 that we used in the previous two videos. Um, I've switched it out. I'm basically using this chip um, because it's a little cheaper and it's a bit easier to find here in the UK. Um, however, there is a small difference um, between the two chips, which we will find out about a little bit later in this video. Creating the PCB layout uh, is probably the best part of the whole project uh, and it's been great fun. Um, it's like it's like a giant puzzle trying to figure out how to run the tracks around the board without crossing each other, um, which which is it's more challenging than you might think. Uh, and the best part of this process is you get to see a 3D image of what the board will look like, which is amazing. Uh, there are loads of videos on how to do this, so I won't go through uh, the ins and outs. Um, I, I just watched various videos and you pick it up pretty quickly. I used a PCB Way plugin for KiCad to send the completed design files over to be manufactured. Um, that just saved me the hassle of having to export the Gerber files. Um, I need to say that although PCBWay did leave a comment on the last video offering to give me some free boards to help with making this content, um, I figured it was only right uh, to give uh, an honest opinion. Um, so I've paid for these boards with my own money, um, which in this instance was around £20 for 10 boards. Um, the bulk of that was the shipping to the UK from China. Um, but I think it's pretty reasonable, all in all. I think the boards themselves are like five dollars, um, but obviously the the shipping shipping halfway around the world um, is what makes up the most uh, the bulk of the price. Um, when placing the order, uh, I I used all the default settings. Uh, the only odd bit was having to wait for someone to check the design files before you can check out and pay. Um, it makes sense now that they'd uh, they'd want to check the designs first before taking your money, which is kind of nice. Um, but it did leave me clicking around wondering if I was doing something wrong for a few minutes. The boards arrived a few days later. I soldered the surface mount components using hot air. That's the Max 31855 chip and the capacitor. Uh, that was pretty easy, even though uh, I spotted my first mistake at this point, which was the capacitor size. Uh, I'd gone with a 402 SMD size, which is about one millimetre long. Um, on the computer, everything looks big and fine. Um, but in real life, it was so small, like I could barely even see it. It was like a, um, it's smaller than a pinhead. Once the board was soldered, uh, I discovered mistake number two, which was I assumed that all the ESP32 S3s were similar sizes. Um, all the pinouts were the same. They looked visually very, very similar. Um, but you know what they say about assumption. Uh, it turns out 
there I'd used uh, a footprint from and the, the the actual Espressive ESP32 S3. Um, everything looked the same apart from the fact that that one is 23 millimeters wide and the board that I'd bought off Amazon, which must be some kind of clone of that, uh, that was actually two millimeters wider, so it didn't fit. Then finally, I managed to boot the board up only to find mistake number three, which was another assumption that I made. That was that the Max 31855 chip was a an identical direct replacement for the Max 6675. Again, you look at the chips, look at the schematics and everything seems the same. Um, but it turns out there's one slight difference, which was grounding so grounding of the thermocouple negative uh, i wasn't getting any when i booted it up i wasn't getting any readings from the thermocouple um, and eventually i got some errors uh, from the esp home logs stating that the max 31855 chip was shorting out to 3.3 volt 3.3 uh, volts this was because the Max 6675 connected the thermocouple negative to ground, whereas the newer chip, um, you're not supposed to. It wasn't on the board. So uh, it was a simple fix. I just cut the tracks and soldered a wire in place um, and boom, everything came to life. Everything worked. So this has led to version 1.1. Uh, on this version, I've increased the size of the capacitor to an 805 uh, SMD size, uh, which is about two point something millimeters. Uh, so I can actually see it and it makes soldering so much easier. Uh, I've widened the footprint of the ESP32 by two millimeters and I've rerouted the tracks to avoid uh, grounding the thermocouple connection. So another 25 pound later, uh, the new design files have been sent off to PCBWay to be manufactured again. Um, although 10 minutes after doing that, I then realized that um, I've lost all of the custom labeling that I put onto the silkscreen layer. Um, that must have got lost when I did the update between the schematic and the PCB. Um, so that's, I mean, it won't, it won't stop the boards working, but it was just annoying. New boards have arrived and I've assembled the components and everything is now working beautifully. Uh, I did have to calibrate the readings a bit and they're about 30 degrees too high, which uh, I didn't get with the 665 chip. There uh, must be some oddity or quirk with this new chip. Um, so last job to do is to mount the PCB into the box and drill the holes for the wires to go in, the power to go in. So we've learned a few things on this project. We've learned that creating your own custom PCB uh, is not only quite straightforward, but it's also great fun. Uh, I've also learned to double check every assumption and check every measurement before placing an order to have the boards made. That will definitely save a few quid. I've really enjoyed this little mini series as well. Let me know uh, if you'd like me to do any more of this kind of content. Um, I do have some 50 kilogram weight sensors that I want to play with, so I'm not quite sure what to do with them yet. Add a comment uh, if you have any ideas for electronic projects or home assistant projects that we could look at together. Um, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you on the next one.